video I want to share with you uh, something that came out on Fox News. I guess this is about three days ago. Um, it's I want to bring to your attention the fact that these people are supposed to be journalists. They're supposed to know what they're talking about. They're supposed to research their subjects before they just come out blowing their hot air all over the place. And so I want to I want you to listen to a few minutes of this and keep in mind that they have not researched this subject. They are lying and they have resources. They make a lot of money. Fox News makes a lot of money. They can afford to hire an attorney, an attorney. They can afford to hire people to do research for them. And they should know of all people the stuff that they're going to say, whether or not it's true, before they come out and say it. So these people are just spewing crap. They're idiots and they're spewing crap either on purpose or um, because they're just stupid. So I want you to keep in mind that everything that they say is a lie. And then I'm going to I'm going to prove to you why it's a lie. I don't want to listen to the whole video. You can go out on Fox and listen to the video, but they're talking about IRS and IRS powers. The IRS, first of all, has no power. So listen up for a few minutes. A critical detail on IRS surveillance was hidden deep inside the Treasury Department report on tax compliance data. Is this yet another move towards big brother governance in America? Here to discuss is FreedomWorks Chair Steve Moore, former Dallas Fed Chair Danielle DiMartino Booth, and Fox Business contributor Adam Lashinsky. Good to... So this is a former Fed Chair, and this guy is the biggest idiot, I think, in the world that I've seen so far. This guy, I don't know what he's talking about. And this guy here just is going right along with them. So obviously these people have gotten together and decided that they're going to tell you, again, you have to pay taxes. There's nothing you can do about it. Everybody owes a federal tax. That's what this guy says. You can't get out of paying federal taxes. Well, first of all, federal taxes are for officers and employees of the federal government. That is the law. There's not much else that is in the law. So I'm going to show you how only federal people owe tax. Okay, so here we're going to the Office of the Law Revision Council, United States Code. Okay, now you look at here and you see an asterisk. You see that little star right there? That means something. I'm going to tell you what it means. These little asterisks mean that the entire, entire, the entire title has been made a law. That means without an asterisk, it has not been made a law. If you go all the way to the bottom, it says that this title has been enacted into positive law. Positive law means that it's been made a law, and it's right here in Title I, Chapter 3, Section 204A. You can go here and read it for yourself. Started here, provided, however, that whenever... Uh, titles of such code shall have been enacted into positive law in the text thereof shall be legal evidence of the laws therein contained in all the courts of the United States, not the corporate courts that they bring you into now. They're not, they're not bringing you into courts in the United States when you don't pay taxes. They're bringing you into a corporate court that appears to be the United States court. But it's, first of all, it's not the United States court. Second of all, it's not the law. And third, um, it has no jurisdiction, power, or authority. Okay, so you could go in there and read that. Title I, Chapter 3, Section 204A. Right here from provided that it has, it, has to be, it has to have a positive law citation. What is a positive law citation? It's right here. These journalists, so-called journalists, can't figure this shit out, right? because they're so smart. They want to tell you everything, but yet they're fucking idiots. And they're trying to tell you, well, you have to pay taxes. Everybody's got to pay taxes. And now they're going to go into your account and they're just going to take whatever they want. And they're going to do it without a warrant and without anything and blah, blah, blah. That's what they're telling you in that video. This title has been made positive law by section one of act such and such provided that in part title one of the United States code Entitled General Provisions is codified and enacted into positive law and may be cited as. Okay, so this is a positive law citation. 
it conforms to Title I, Chapter 3, Section 204. So let's look at the IRS code. Now remember, I told you the asterisk here show that it's a law. I'm going to scroll through this slowly and you just look and see what's the law and what's not the law. A lot of titles, not laws. And yes, the titles have laws in them, and I'll explain that to you also. Oh, look, Title 26, not a law, no positive law citation. Hmm. Does it have any authority? Well, let's look here. If they want to put a lien on your property, they can't. Citus, that's an important word to know. You need to know that word. You need to look it up. Here's the dictionary word right here. The place to which, for purposes of legal jurisdiction or taxation, a property belongs. So does your property belong to the IRS? Can they put a lien on it? No, because you know why? Because it doesn't belong to them. It has to belong to them for them to put a lien on it. It has to be subject to their jurisdiction. How can it be subject to their jurisdiction if it's not even a law? It's not a law. It's not a law. It's not a law. It's not a law. It has no jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is power and authority. Title 26 Revenue Code, not a law. All three of you. Uh, Steve, first two, giving the IRS an open door to look into all of your, your money data, not only incoming, which is what the IRS was meant to start doing, but outgoing. That is all of the, the things you might pay for, including stuff that might reveal your political preferences. Now, what could... Oh, our political preferences, so they can single us out. Not a law. It's not a law. It has no citizen. It has no jurisdiction. It doesn't own you. It doesn't own your property. The federal government taxation codes inside here, they, they put them all together inside Title 26. So I'm not saying there's not laws inside Title 26. I'm telling you that Title 26 is not a law. There may be laws inside Title 26, but who are they for? That's the big question. Who are they for? The 1939 code says it's for officers and employees of the federal government which is a law. Title V, these are the people under Title V, they're the ones that pay taxes. The people under here, the president, they pay taxes. But guess what? Title II Congress, not a law either. So, uh, civil servants who are employees and officers who are the military, they pay taxes. Okay? Title 26 is simply a whole bunch of stuff put together to show you um, in, a, in a small packet all the laws applicable to taxation, but Title 26 is not a law. You know why? Because all the laws that are for taxation purposes apply to federal officers and employees of the federal government. Because they are within the jurisdiction. They are on federal lands. The federal lands is the CITES. How do I know that? Because they have an inventory report of all the federal areas inside the states to where their jurisdiction applies. How do I know they have federal areas in the state? Because it's in the Constitution. Where in the Constitution? Where in the Constitution does it say the federal government has the right to tax? Title I. I'm sorry, uh, Article 1, Chapter, Article 1, Section 2, no, Article 1, Section 2, Article 1, Section 8. I don't know why that was so hard for me. Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, impost, excise, da 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 da. Okay, no period here. No period here. No period here, no period until the very end, which is in Clause 18. Right here, that's the only period. So what does that mean? That means all of this goes together. It stays together. It's glued together. You can't take it apart. Remember, taxes. Congress has the right to lay taxes. On who? 
over such district as may be by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of government of the United States and like authority, like authority, what does like authority mean? I'm going to tell you. Let's get to the other area, areas. Places purchased. So seat and places, places purchased. Those are the federal lands. Okay, and like authority, what does that mean? Exclusive to the federal government. These are federal areas. The federal areas were supposed to be for defense purposes, erection of forts, magazines, arsenals. Erection means to erect. Erect means to create a state. Okay? A state of what? Defense. Forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other need needful buildings. But how do I know that? Because it's in the inventory report. All the federal lands used for defense purposes to where the federal government has power and authority. Check this out. The definition of power and authority is jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is capital P, power, and capital A for authority, which is also in here somewhere. I'm not going to dig around for it. Inventory report. All these are available on the Internet. Inventory report on jurisdictional status over of federal areas within the state. How do we know the jurisdictional status? Because they have codes. Exclusive legislative jurisdiction where they can tax on the federal lands. Where they have exclusive legislative jurisdiction is where they can impose their taxes. Article 1, Section 8. Congress has power to lay and collect taxes on who? People on the federal lands. 17. The seat and places purchased. Exclusive, exclusive legislation. Where's exclusive legislation? Right here. For defense purposes. How do I know for defense purposes? Because it says right here to create a state, forts, arsenal, magazines for defense. To create a state for defense. It uses state in a very, very, very general, the most general sense. And here, state means one thing, and somewhere else, state means a different thing. So you have to understand what it's saying. You have to read between the lines. You have to know how it's using state. Some states command the federal government. Some states the federal government commands. The state, the federal government commands its created states for defense purposes. And the people on it, the 1939 code, Internal Revenue Code, says... It is for the salaries, it's a public taxation for salaries of the uh, public officers and employees. We are not public officers and employees. They have done all the paperwork to find out, to find out where they have jurisdiction and what areas they have jurisdiction over. Where is it? It's down here. It's a form that they use and they filed the form. It's from 1962. And they've done them every so often. GSA circular number 275 included in here. Where it lists the address of all the federal places. They're lying to you. They know. They know because they have done the paperwork. And then they have to check off what, what jurisdiction they have. The only place they can tax is where they have exclusive jurisdiction. It says it in the Constitution. It says it. Where does it say it? Article 1, Section 8. The Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, excise, all the whole list of things. No periods. No periods till you get to the bottom. Where? See, lands purchased for what? Defense. Excluding the state that it's erected in. The state within the state. A state gave up lands. A state, the state that gave up the lands gave up all the, all the authority over those lands. Like authority. 
The federal government has authority over the federal lands. How do I know? It's right here in their jurisdictional status, in their papers. It's in their papers. They have these copies there in their offices. They know they're not supposed to tax us. So what did they do? They created a corporation. They created a corporation that taxes us instead. So they can say, well, we're not taxing you. The corporation is. Does the corporation have authority? No. The corporation doesn't have any authority. They say you have to pay taxes. Everyone has to pay taxes. Everyone does not have to pay taxes. They're liars. They're liars. possibly go wrong with that. Dude. You know, David, I remember, I'm old enough to remember, and you are, when the left uh, used to be very suspicious of the IRS. That there was a civil liberties movement on the left that really worried about the abuses of, uh, of IRS agents. And, and they were legion, as you've mentioned. It goes back, you know, 50 or 60 years of the IRS. Jade is the backdrop here. Uh, just a matter of weeks ago, uh, you know, the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve, they were being accused of, of being ostriches with their heads in the sand. China's, you know, pushing forward aggressively with their own uh, central bank digital currency. They're actively, and they're not even pretending. These people are not for your privacy. All four of these are for, they're trying to sound like they're not for it, but they're for taxes because this guy here towards the end he says everybody has to pay taxes everybody does Gains not tax. have to pay taxes uh, adam i i want to i want to just mention again that it is a proposal by the irs isn't it something that so the irs is asking the government it's a proposal they're asking the government can we can we just get into everybody's account and see where they're spending all their money republicans should be negotiating with the administration about saying look because it's a proposal, we, we will go along with you on some things, maybe on cryptocurrency, but not on having unlimited act. Oh, they want to go along on cryptocurrency. So they want to make sure that you're paying taxes on your cryptocurrency to which you're not supposed to pay taxes on because you're not a federal officer or employee and you're not on federal lands. You're not subject to the jurisdiction. As to, to people's bank accounts. They want in your bank account. They want in your bank account. They want to see where you're spending money. David, you know these bills can go to the hundreds of pages. So, you know, if, if so, so, so put in. They go in the hundred pages and nobody will read it. It's right in the limits, right in what they are. By the way, Steve wants a flat tax. I have, an, I have another idea. Oh, this guy who wants a flat tax. He wants a flat tax. Some, some guy named Steve wants a flat tax. He's got another idea for taxes. Let's just tax and tax and tax. Um, stop letting his donors take any tax deductions for their donations, and then there will I'm be okay nothing for that. the IRS. Oh, he just doesn't want you to have any tax deductions. Scrutinize. He's okay I'm with that. Gonna... I think we have an agreement on that one. Danielle, <laughs> I want to talk briefly about... All lies, all bullshit, all idiots trying to get you to go along by, by telling you everybody has to pay taxes, I just told you. I just showed you the IRS code is not a law. It's not a law. Where else does it say that? Where else does it talk about jurisdiction? That's what you need to study jurisdiction. You want to study jurisdiction? You want to be free? You need to understand jurisdiction. Let's see. Federal report. This is a federal report from 1956. Jurisdiction over the federal areas within the states. So states within the states. The federal areas within the states. What are the federal areas? I won't go into a lot of detail in this document. You have God, man, the creation of an independent state, which creates the federal government, and the federal government creates a dependent state. This is a creation of the federal government. It, the federal government taxes that. It all goes from here to here. It doesn't go back down. It does not go back down. It doesn't go back down. It goes from here to here. 
The sovereignty goes from here to here. They, the federal government, does not have sovereignty over mankind because that's where it gets its sovereignty from. Okay? It doesn't have sovereignty over the independent state because that's where it gets its sovereignty from. It has sovereignty only over the dependent state, which are the federal areas for defense purposes, to which they have no sovereignty. There's none left for them. They don't get it. Jurisdiction over the federal military areas for defense purposes within the independent states created by the, the sovereigns, us, the people, the private citizens. Report of the Interdepartmental Committee for the Study of Jurisdiction over Federal Areas Within the States. When they do this form and this booklet, the inventory report, references this report. This is a government report. Submitted to the Attorney General. That means all the state's Attorney Generals know because guess what? Where do you think this committee got its information from? The Attorney General and all the Attorneys Generals General in, in side each of the independent states. Each of the, each of the states. That's where they got the information from. Read what it says here. I'll read it to you. Chapter 1. The media are liars. They're lying. They're lying to you. And if they don't know that they're lying, then they're not doing their job. Okay? The federal officers and employees, as well as their families, had to become federal citizens and move onto the federal lands where they lived and worked. They It was like a country within a country because they were... Citizens of that state, the federal state, the federally created state, the dependent areas inside the independent states. They complained because they didn't have certain services. They didn't have hospitals. They didn't have schools. They complained and complained and complained until the 14th Amendment was passed, making them citizens of the independent state so that they could use our services. They are federal citizens. Federal citizens by Black's Law Dictionary is citizen of the United States because the United States are the combined federal areas inside the states. The instant study was occasioned by the denial of a group of children of federal employees residing on the grounds of federal lands, in this case, a Veterans Administration Hospital, because those are federal lands. Those are on federal lands. If you go up to Fort, if you go up to Leavenworth, Kansas, they have a big, huge Veterans Administration Hospital there. They still have the houses where their doctors and their officers lived, because they had they were federal citizens. They had to live on the federal lands. They were deprived of the opportunity of attending public schools in the town in which the hospital was located because it was separate. An administrative decision against the children was affirmed by local courts. No, you can't use our, our schools. Sorry. Finally, including the Supreme Court of the state. The Supreme Court. No, you can't use our services. You can't use our lands. Go back to where your federal stuff is. Go over there and build your own schools. The decisions were based on the ground that residents of the area in which the hospital was located were not residents of the state. They were not state citizens. Since exclusive legislative jurisdiction over the area had been given up by the state to the federal government. Where did we see that at? Exclusive legislative jurisdiction. Right here, exclusive legislative jurisdiction. This term is applied when the federal government possesses by whichever method acquired all of the authority of the state and in which the state concerned has not reserved to itself the right to exercise any of the authority concurrently with the United States except for the... So the state and then the United States, two different places. 
the state concerned has not reserved to itself the right to exercise any authority concurrently with the United States except the right to serve civil and criminal processes in the area for activities which occurred outside the area. So the only thing the federal government can do off federal lands is serve criminal processes when you commit a crime on federal lands. So if a federal employee, which did happen in the past, stole money from the federal government and ran off the federal lands, they would serve a criminal process in the state and then the state would bring the guy back to the federal lands and give it back to the federal government to, to stand trial. Because the state had jurisdiction over state lands and whatever it gave up to the federal government, it gave up the jurisdiction to those areas. Meaning the federal government has complete control over those areas and nowhere else. They don't have complete control anywhere else. What complete controls do they have? It's in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8. Taxes. Taxes are to be applied on the federal lands where the government has exclusive legislative jurisdiction. It's all one sentence. It cannot be picked apart. These numbers go along with the form. They're called jurisdictional codes. Indicates the legislative jurisdiction. Off federal lands, they have no right to tax. They weren't given that right off federal lands. They were not given the right off federal lands to tax anybody. It's not in the Constitution. Only in the place where they have exclusive legislative jurisdiction were they given the right to tax or control commerce or imposts or excise. Only for defense purposes. I showed you the form. Here's the form. Where they took the address of all the places that they owned in every single state. These forms were sent back to the government after they were filled out and then sent back to the states so that everybody would know where the government has jurisdiction and where they don't. They only have exclusive jurisdiction on the federal lands that are used for defense or military purposes. That's it and their taxes are supposed to be for the federal officers and employees. Don't let them fool you. The relationship between states and persons residing in federal areas in these states is disarranged and disrupted with tax losses, lack of, lack of police control, and other disadvantages to the states. So the states were complaining that they lost taxes to the people on the federal lands. Many residents of federally owned areas are deprived of numerous privileges and services, such as voting and certain access to courts, which are the usual incidents of residents within a state. They weren't even allowed to, to vote in state elections. The status. Status is the same as citis as the same as situation, as the same as jurisdiction, as the same as taxes, uh, taxing authority. The status of the District of Columbia as the seat of government area, area referred to in the first part of the clause is fairly well known. It is not nearly as well known that under the second part of the clause, the second part of this clause is what they're talking about, 17, like authority, starting at like authority. That's the second part of the clause. Most people don't understand the rest of it. That's what this is saying. The second part of the clause, the federal government has acquired to the exclusion of the states. So the states gave up the land. The federal government acquired it. They acquired complete control, which is complete jurisdiction, 100% jurisdiction over those areas such as it exercises with respect to the District of Columbia over the several thousand areas scattered over the 48 states. What? The several thousand areas scattered over the 48 states. So not the 48 states, the areas in the 48 states. 
federal acquisition of legislative jurisdiction. So they had to acquire jurisdiction. They had to acquire authority to rule over those areas. Okay. Article 1, Section 8. They had to acquire the authority to rule over those areas. Federal acquisition of legislative jurisdiction over such areas has made of them federal islands within states, which the term enclaves is frequently used to describe. Power and authority over lands, not ownership of lands. That's, that's just a note that I added there. Okay, so all of this, all of this BS about them being able to federally tax us, run us through a ringer, using the IRS, it's all bullshit. These people know, all the attorneys know, all the politicians know, uh, all the media knows, Judicial Watch knows, Trump's attorneys know, Biden's attorneys know, Biden knows. Congressmen, senators, representatives, uh, they all know. They all know because they all know what's a positive law and what's not a positive law. They know this stuff. They know it. The governors, the presidents, some libertarians know. I've heard some libertarians speak and they run for president and they say, you have to pay your taxes. Well, <laughs> yeah, show me where. Just show me where. Just tell me, show me where it's not in there. Show me where the state gave up jurisdiction to the federal government. I know where the federal government stole jurisdiction from the states during the civil war or right after it, that thanks to Lincoln instituting an army inside of our states against the constitution. If there's one thing that these people that, that uh, allowed for the writing of the Constitution didn't want, it was a standing army. It's all over the congressional journals, the continental journals. That was their chief complaint against the king, was he put standing armies in all their colonies, harassing them constantly. If there's one thing these people didn't want, it was a standing army. Okay? So... Idiot, panel of idiots, panel of assholes right here, jerks, all of them, uh, liars, helping the government Something that Janet steal from us, helping, helping um, persuade you to think that you have to do something that's not true. And then go to, uh, go to this website, uscode.house.gov. Just look, search and browse. That's all. It's going to come right up. I just Google OLRC. This list comes right up. Just just go down the list and look. Not a law. 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 You get the idea. Look here, too. They lie to you. Look here. Highways. There's no positive law citation in here. Look, it's got an asterisk, though. You know why? Because they make a lot of money sending police out on the highway to arrest you, to, to make you register your vehicle, to make you get a driver's license. All lies. All lies. All lies. All lies. Okay? Y'all have to share this video. You have to share it with people. You have to understand it. If you don't share it with people, go out, learn this stuff, and talk to people about it. Show them these websites. Tell them, look, guess what? Guess what I found out? Look, that's that's not a law. Did you know that that's not a law? Did you know that... Let's see. Public health and welfare is not a law? Oh. Hey, friend. Hey, friend. Did you know that the CDC stuff, they have no authority? Hey friend, crime control and law enforcement, well they have no authority, they have no actual authority. Hey friend, 
Navigation in navigable waters. It's never been enacted into a, a, a actual law. Hey friend, Title 29 labor is not a law. Intoxicating liquor is not a law. Internal Revenue Code, Indians, hospitals and asylums. Because all these were originally instituted to help the people on the federal lands acquire services that they needed. It wasn't meant for all of us. Okay? So please learn this stuff. Stop watching the news. Stop watching these assholes lie to you. Learn this stuff and go out and teach it to people and share it with your friends. Okay? Um, be alert and be vigilant. Be kind to one another. And like, share, subscribe. If you can't do those, then just um, watch the videos and then talk to people about this stuff. Please. Okay? Um, have a great day.